I think it's fair to say we could all do with some good news. And so you'll be pleased to know that this video is a lovely little five minute recap of all the good news concerning British wildlife over the past month or so. I'm hoping to make these a regular thing, maybe once a month, where we just sit down together and soak up some much needed positivity. Because as much as it's important to highlight the ways British wildlife is so often suffering and what we can do about it, it, I think it's equally crucial to celebrate the victories we're achieving as a movement as well. And thankfully, November brought some real successes. We start off with the tremendous news that the Scottish ban on snares has now come into force, meaning the horribly cruel devices that we recently reported on in the case of the Duke of Westminster's estate a week or so ago are now against the law, much to the annoyance, of course, of the Countryside Alliance and the pro-shooting fraternity. The Scottish ban itself came about back in March as part of the Wildlife Management and Muirburn Act and has been a really long time coming, as outlined by the excellent organisation One Kind. We are here at the Scottish Parliament and it's been really heartwarming to see how many MSPs have come out to celebrate the ban on snaring in Scotland. And um, I've just been reflecting on how much hard work has gone into getting to this stage. Um, some of those MSPs have been working towards this for years, decades even, um, as have the really hard working people at One Kind now and people who previously worked for the organisation, um, all our wonderful supporters and also lots of friends at, at other organisations. This is such a, it's been such a team effort um, and it, it it's it's a really important step forward to ending the harm done to Scotland's animals. So we're absolutely delighted. And we're pleased to say that we're talking to One Kind and other organisations behind the scenes to bolster the campaign to ensure a ban on free running snares here in England too. Next up, it's the inspiring news that our wonderful community helped a new hunt saboteur group absolutely smash their fundraising goal. A few weeks ago, we were approached for help with equipment by a group we'd started seeing in online reports, the Welsh Border Wildlife Protection. Protectors. Speaking to Protect the Wild, the group stated in only a few weeks we have saved multiple foxes and gathered evidence of illegal hunting and illegal activity, which is now being reviewed by the police. So of course, when they came to us asking for help in acquiring a drone, an incredibly useful bit of kit that can prove highly effective in keeping an eye on hunts, we were more than happy to do whatever we could to help. So we contributed 500 pounds towards the purchase of a new drone and wrote an article on our Substack asking our supporters to show them some support too and we were just blown away by the reaction. Overnight our community pushed the group's fundraiser to over £2,000 meaning the new group can now purchase a drone as well as lots of other equipment to help them out in the field. It's brilliant to see what we can achieve in such a short space of time when we all club together and if this has left you feeling inspired i will leave the link below to our equipment fund where every month our supporters chip in a few quid and every pound goes directly towards buying items for the heroes in the field taking on wildlife abusers and talking of fox hunting there is renewed action to tackle it head on in northern ireland you may be shocked to discover fox hunting is actually still legal in both northern ireland and the republic of ireland in fact the situation is so so bad that we know of hunters here in England actually traveling across the Irish Sea for fox hunting holidays. Yes, they are literally that desperate to hunt foxes undeterred and without the risk of prosecution that they will go there specifically to hunt foxes on sick little trips away. And there are thought to be around 40 to 50 active fox hunting packs across Ireland. So it's really welcome news that there are these fresh attempts to ban the pastime in Northern Ireland. Most recently in 2023, Alliance MLA John Blair brought forward a bill to see an end to the pastime. But
but it was voted down by mostly a combination of Sinn Féin and DUP MLAs. Thankfully, Blair is coming back to have another go at it and has recently launched a consultation backing a new private member's bill to see fox hunting made illegal in Northern Ireland. We'll of course keep you posted on any progress and in the meantime, should you like to have your say, you can fill out the public consultation which is still open and I'll leave the link for that below this video. And in other good news for wildlife is the story that a large area of chalk grassland in East Ken is to be restored to create habitats for key species. The project will cover an area of 20 acres around Dover Castle and the Western Heights, aiming to provide homes for choffs, Adonis blue butterflies, early spider orchids, and other flora and fauna. This is really good to see and a big well done to everyone involved in this project. It's my hope that initiatives like this can really inspire much broader efforts across the country as it becomes more evident by the day that habitat restoration and rewilding must become central to how we think about land use. Lastly, in case you missed it, some footage went viral last week of some foxes playing in the snow at Oxford University. So here it is if you missed it. your monthly recap of the wins and good news for British wildlife over the past few weeks. As always, thank you for watching. Please leave a comment. Let me know what you think of these new good news roundups that we're going to be doing. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And as always, if you haven't subscribed already, please do.